My name's Eric Strebel, and welcome to another video of mine about industrial design. This is the third video in my Adventure Toy Rendering series. You're looking at the Red Jack Adventure Toy Vehicle. In the first episode, I showed you how I thumbnail concepted the Red Jack, and in the previous episode, I did a front three-quarter rendering view. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you construct and render a top-down three-quarter rear view of this vehicle. I start by putting some graphite down on a computer-generated underlay to make sure that I get the perspective right. I basically have a simple box and I can use this box to help me build my vehicle inside of. It allows me to set up the perspective correct. It also allows me to do the wheels without having to spend too much time uh, getting all the ellipses right because they're sort of there in front of me and I've done that already. You'll see here, I lay out the ellipses for the wheels that I can see in the front. I don't detail everything, I just do the basics. I don't even do the uh, wheel in the very back because you don't see that in the rendering, uh, so I don't need to do that. With my foundation laid down, I now go in and I lay in the basic gesture of the vehicle. I start in the front where I put in the window and now I come to what is actually the back of the vehicle and I put in those fenders and I start to add from there. I now lay in the back window. I want to make sure that I get the gesture of the vehicle right. I put in the door. Now I'm going to work on the basic roof line so that it looks like the other vehicle. I'm just doing the very, very basics to rough in the concept. Next I'll come and I'll put in some of the details. When you do another view of the vehicle, that is of course the point of the view, to show some other features that you can't see that are hidden in the uh, other view. So in this case the rear view allows me to really see the stairs, the top of the vehicle, the sort of hatch, the lights, the uh, moon roof or the uh, glass that's on the top of the vehicle you know most of the parts of the world have something to look up at night uh, whether it's mountains or stars or birds or whatever um, there's always great stuff going on overhead um, so it's nice to be able to look out the top of your vehicle and see what's going on in the rest of the world instead of just forward right and left um, especially too when you're in the water let's say you're crossing uh, some sort of fjord um, who knows polar bears all kinds of things start jumping on your vehicle you kind of want to know what's up there it's good to have some windows to the world now I start laying in the ground shadow the light comes from the left and it lights up the largest size of the vehicle which is the main part of the vehicle that you can actually see. So the shadow goes away from you. I see a lot of designers with videos on YouTube where they're lighting their objects from behind and the shadow is facing towards you. That's super amateurish. You want to light your vehicle to where you get the most amount of light on the biggest side of the vehicle and the shadow is on the shortest side of your object. In this case, it's on the right hand side and the shadow goes away from you. Once I've got the vehicle all fleshed in and everything is kind of good, then I'm going to work on the wheels again. I do them first as I mentioned before. I fill them in with marker and I go in and outline everything uh, with a ballpoint pen usually. That way the pen doesn't smear or f uh, wash out from the marker um, depending upon what kind of look I'm going for. Again, putting in the ground plane, uh, the shadows, getting that vehicle anchored to the ground, making that look believable. If I nail that first in the beginning, then I have a greater chance of success. Again, doing the bottom of the vehicle. I like to work a lot of times on the, my objects or products that I'm working on from the ground up. Here I'm putting in the ribs on the side of the vehicle to help keep the vehicle 
driving straight while it's going through the water and add a lot of strength to the vehicle as well. Uh, you really don't want to be breaking down when you're going on your adventure across the planet, so I want to make sure this vehicle is as strong as possible. I add a little bit of red to the vehicle to help tie all the elements together. The wheels have red in them, and then there's some red trim and the steps to help the person get into the vehicle, and it really adds a little cachet to the vehicle, uh, kind of brings it to the next level, because the vehicle is a pretty simple vehicle, um, but adding that color sort of takes it to the next level. I think it's a really nice design touch. So I'm adding in a little bit of white pencil here to put in some highlights on the wheels. Next I'm going to lay in the value for the windows. So I just use a gray, it's probably about a 3 or 4 value. I lay in gray for everything the same and then I come back and I darken it, particularly here in the uh, back of the vehicle where the glass wraps around to show some depth. I'm adding a little bit of uh, darker value underneath that roof line to suggest a shadow. Put in my simple pen outline to suggest that there's a little gasket around the window. To finish defining the form, I erase a lot of the pencil ahead of time so that doesn't get trapped by the marker. I add in the red detail on the roof and here I'm coming back with my pencil and I'm finishing up the details. In this case, I am putting in my pen first. I know I'm not going to have a lot of value in the roof, so I'm not too worried about it smearing. And I want to get that all laid in. Next, I add in the value of the glass in the roof. A little bit of transparency there by showing some of the lines showing through. And in this case, I do want the marker to wash out the ballpoint pen line in that one uh, top glass section to show a little bit of depth. Now here I add a reflection in the window of the fenders. Just adds a little bit of detail. I'm putting in the hatch on the top of the vehicle. Allows you to poke your head out, uh, maybe look around in the world uh, with your binoculars or get out that captain's chair and watch your favorite race cars drive around in a circle. Who knows? Sky's the limit. I'm just adding in some of the details here. Going back, putting in my signature. I like to hide it inside the vehicle. It adds a little bit of detail uh, to the vehicle. Maybe instead of some graphics, uh, put my name in there and kind of hide it. Do it different than other designers. And I'm just adding in a little bit more contrast to punch up the drawing. Putting in highlights uh, with a white jelly roll and making any final adjustments. And there's the final render. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at some space exploration vehicles. They're going to be some of the concept sketches that I did for some toys that I designed in the past. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the music, check out Mike's website, hunchbunny.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Rock on.